Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. I'm Raven, and tonight we are going to adventure in the attic. For this 30th installment of a night marathon, which as you may or may not know is now extended through November, we have a very special guest. Papa Scare is here with us tonight and will be reading one of the stories herein. I am sure you are going to love his narration, so do be sure and follow any of the links available to his channel and subscribe to him as well. Also, if you're watching this on Halloween, happy Halloween! And also, it's worth noting that this is the last day that the shop will be open until December 1st, and it's also the last day of the 60% off everything sale, no code required, at ravenreadshorror.com. So, with all of that out of the way, you know what time it is. It's time to grab your gear, get a beverage of choice, get comfortable, and get ready to take another journey into the night. I live in England in a two-story flat, and I've always believed in the paranormal. But my dad does not believe in any type of ghost, or anything paranormal. I never thought that this flat was haunted. However, as I got older, I started to feel uncomfortable by myself, and I would see shadows downstairs out of the corner of my eye. Now, there is an attic directly above our second floor, but there's no way for us to enter it, as you can't access it from the flat. The only way to access this attic is by having a specific key that can open the attic, as it is Council Flats, which is above all my neighbor's house. However, the attic above my flat is the one which is blocked off, and there's no way to enter it. I have the last flat on the end of these 18 Council Flats. There are no neighbors above us, just the attic that nobody can access without that key and they still wouldn't be able to get above our flat. One night, about two years ago, all of the family was in bed. It was about three o'clock in the morning. All of a sudden, I heard something crash above us. It was so loud that it woke the entire family up, and we all got up and stood on the landing together. After the bang, we heard three loud footsteps, and the sound of something being dragged behind those footsteps. It was so scary, especially since we knew that nobody could physically get up there. My dad was not convinced that it was a ghost. He thought that somebody, somehow, had gotten up into that attic. So he went outside to check to see if the communal attic door was opened. I followed him outside, and it was completely padlocked shut, with heavy chains around the lock. I tried to explain to him how can there be anyone up in our part of the attic when it's blocked off and impossible to get to? We came back into the house and we were all pretty shaken up. My brother was quite young and was able to get back to sleep, but I was awake all night and found it very difficult to sleep. After this experience, I started to smell old cigarette smell every time I would enter the toilet area. It smelled so old and gross. After the event, my brother, my mom, and I were going away on holiday whilst my dad had to stay there and work. He told me that he slept with headphones on every night, as even he felt uncomfortable by himself. I have no idea what those noises were. As a family, we still can't figure it out, and ever since then, we've heard many more strange noises. So, I live in an over 100 year old building, with 6 floors. Floor 5 is somehow haunted. Floor 5 has 5 mansards, which are the storage rooms that are included in the apartment rent. Whenever I come upstairs and turn left around the corner into the hallway, my neck and arm hair literally shoot up from their former flat state. 
I even feel my eyebrows bushing up. After the left turn, the hallway ends around 10 meters into the outer wall of the building. To the left and the right of the hallway are the Manson's doors. And it doesn't help that when you come upstairs and turn around that corner, you look into the pitch black. No windows and you can't flip the light switch to a single light bulb before you enter that darkness for the switch is across the hallway on the other wall across from the stairs. My feeling is always like something dreadful will jump right on me out of that dark if I would stay in the hallway and not hurry to open my mansard's door and go in. Actually switching on the light bulb doesn't help to get that feeling away and neither do torches. The thing is even more invisible in light if that makes sense. So what can I do? Spray holy water? Get a priest? I'm not religious by the way. Is there a spell? Do I have to offer a present? Or facing the possibility it's my imagination and I only work it up because I think about it. What can one do to break this? Today I was so angry about it because I hadn't been up there for over a week because of that. So I took all my courage, went up, pointed into the darkness and said angrily, stop it, go away, let me be, go back to your dimension. It helped a little bit, but my inner urge to flee the hallway is still present. More details here if you're interested. Why do I want to go up there? I equipped my mansard to be an art studio recently. Floor 5 was unsettling to me from the beginning. But the past 7 years, I almost never went up there. So I even totally forgot that something slightly is off there. Yes, slightly during the day. Since I go up later in the afternoon, more often I noticed that the unsettling feeling increases enormously from 5 p.m. and everybody here seems to want to flee my skin when I turn around that corner or step out of my mansard. By the way, my mansard is the first to left. In the rest of the house, I don't feel any of this. Not in my apartment, not in the basement, which would seem to be more of a ghostly scene than the fifth floor. I often go down there to get my laundry even around midnight. Or later, yes I'm a night person. When it comes to my mind and I forget them. And I never feel uncomfortable. As soon as I'm in my mansard, I close the door. I listen to music and will soon be absorbed by my work. I witnessed some unexplainable and spine-freezing occurrences in the past. But as soon as they were over I could get over it, or mainly, I wasn't exposed frequently. Floor 6 is the empty room directly under the roof pitch, which is also pitch black. The whole building was originally built to be a hotel, with a built-on staff room in the early 1900s and was later modified to apartments and two offices. I live in the staff wing, and they were apartments since ever, built for essential hotel employees. I assumed the mansards, which are pretty spacious, were for the chambermaids and other servants. This wing hasn't any access, though, to the main building anymore. I've been hearing knocks coming from the attic and from the walls for a while now. Recently, they've been happening coincidentally right under me. I'll move to one area, and it will happen there. And then, on a separate occasion, I'll be in an entirely different room, and still, it will knock above me, or below me. I've had a history of sleep deprivation, anxiety, and depression. I've heard my name whispered in my ear, and something whisper, Help me. It sounded like some kind of zombie. Recently I've been having terrifying hallucinations. As I'm about to cross into the first stage of sleep, I always feel or hear something that wakes me up immediately. Back and forth from being awake to the entering of the first stage of sleep. I feel something tug at my pillow and the mattress moving as if somebody's trying to lift it. Eventually, I figured all of this was a hallucination for multiple reasons. I've recorded when I felt something push the pillow behind me and there's nothing there. On other occasions, I have felt tremors caused by my body, 
and shaking that felt exactly like what I thought something else was causing. But the noises and seeing things move on their own has been happening for a while now, way before my hallucinations. And those happened out of nowhere. I usually only have motion hallucinations, rather than seeing or hearing things. The knocking is really freaking me out. Could it be possible that I'm hallucinating all of this? Or is it actually real? Either way, it doesn't matter. I've told my parents about the experiences I've had, but they keep denying that it's real. I'm tired of living in fear. If anybody has any idea how to ignore it or get rid of it, I'd love to know. I have an attic in my house, and ever since I was young, I hated going up there. It was dark, as there was no light up there, and it was always absolutely freezing. It had a really bad energy, and my anxiety would skyrocket whenever I had to go up there with my dad. It felt like someone had set a timer, and time was running out, if that makes sense. Like I had to get out of there as soon as possible, or something really bad would happen. In 2016, my parents decided to convert the attic and make it their bedroom. After this happened, I noticed a lot of unexplainable things going on. The first. One day, I was off school, and I was home alone. I was lying on my bed watching the Jeremy Kyle show, with both of my cats on the bed with me. Then I heard what sounded like somebody walking down the stairs from the attic. It's a very distinct sound, and I knew what it was. I paused the video and listened. I didn't hear anything, so I continued watching, now a little on edge. Two minutes later, I heard the footsteps again. My cat's ears perked up, and both of them were staring at my door. Peanut, my cat, started hissing and meowing and went to the end of my bed to hide. At this point, I was tearing up. I somehow managed to get out of bed and pull my drawers in front of the door. I sat in front of the door and called my dad, sobbing. I explained to him what was happening, and he said to get out of my room and look. Hell no. I begged him to call my neighbors to come in and get me. It was only after I called my dad five times he kept hanging up on me, that he finally called my neighbors. When my neighbors came in, they have a key, I flew down the stairs sobbing and shaking. My neighbor checked the entire house, but nobody was there. I didn't feel safe staying home for weeks after this. The second. My best friend and I would hang out after school at my house most days, and whenever we did, we would always hear noises from upstairs. One time, in particular, we were in the kitchen making noodles, and we heard banging upstairs. I assumed it was my cat and didn't think anything of it. My friend then shushed me and told me to listen. From upstairs, I could hear the sound of someone opening and closing a chest of drawers, and slamming my wardrobe doors. Now, my cats are loud and clever, but how does a cat open a drawer? It's a very distinct sound. So we ended up waiting in my back garden, holding a paint scraper and a knife until my dad came home. The third. This is by far one of the scariest stories. My dad, my sister, and I were all home. My dad called up the stairs to me and said he was going to the shops. Once he left, I went downstairs to grab some food. I asked my sister if she wanted anything to eat and she said yes. She was in the front room, so I was talking to her from the kitchen. My dad knocked on the door and I yelled at her to get it. She didn't. I went to get the door, telling her off for being lazy. When I opened the door, in came my dad and my sister. After months of noises, banging, hearing people talking and walking around when I was home alone, I was sick of it. I felt anxious to be in my own home, and I had other things to worry about. So one day, I decided to try to talk to whatever it was that was in that house. I didn't use a Ouija board or anything like that, 
I just sat on my stairs and had a chat, I guess. I told them that I respected that they were in this house before, but that they were scaring me and stressing me out. I asked if they would be able to leave, or at the very least, to stop scaring me. After this, I've never had anything happen in my house. No banging, no noises, nothing. When I was younger, about nine, my parents and all of my siblings went on vacation to Germany, while me, my sister who is three years older than me, and my brother, who was in high school at the time, stayed home. We had our next door neighbors babysitting us. I live out in the country on 18 acres, so nobody is very close to us besides them. Anyway, my house has always been a little bit creepy in certain parts, but it comes and goes. The night before everything happened, my neighbor Fred fixed all of the locks in the house, specifically this one door by my parents' bedroom that we never use. I think I've probably used that door a total of 10 times, and I've lived here for 11 years. Their bedroom is on the first floor, and everybody else's is on the second. So he fixed all the locks, and then latched them all shut. We only ever used the side door by the garage and the front door. So the next day we all went to school, and my sister and I went to our singing and dancing group after that. Rachel, who was watching us, drove us. Fred worked, and we picked him up on our way home, so just my brother was home. His room is right next to the attic. So we all get home from being gone all day, and my brother is freaking out. He said that while he was sleeping, the attic door, so to speak, fell onto the floor by his room. To get to the attic, you have to stand on a ladder, and you have to push the door up because it rests on a border on the wall. You have to slide the door up to sit on the floor of the attic, and this door fell down onto the floor, which is wild because to do that, it would have had to have been turned sideways, and nobody was home. We all get home, and every single door in that house is wide open. There are five different doors on the first floor, so everybody's freaking out, wondering what happened and we go upstairs and see the door sitting on the floor. Everybody goes into my parents' room, and I'm walking from the kitchen to their room. I hear my name being called very quietly from upstairs. I walked into the room, and everybody else was in the room too. Nobody was upstairs. Nobody could have been calling me. It could have been an intruder or somebody trying to steal, but nothing was missing. And that hasn't been the only scary thing that's happened in my house. Either way, it gave us all quite the fright. And this happened a few years ago, when I was around the age of 18. My group of friends and I were staying at this friend's late grandparents' house in a ghost town in the mountains of Italy. The house is built on two floors with a small courtyard on the front, and stairs connecting the two floors on the outside of the house, accessible from the courtyard. When this happened, we were chilling out in the courtyard. Some other people and I were facing the entrance of the house, and we were able to see inside of the second floor, specifically the one central corridor with the door to the different rooms. Two people got inside the house and went to the bathroom which is at the end of the corridor, on the right. A few minutes later, they got out and called out for us, asking if somebody had opened the trap door leading to the attic, which is located at the very end of the corridor, right outside the bathroom. That's where things got weird. There was no way for someone to open the trap door, as you would have needed a ladder to get up there, since the ceilings are quite high, and the only ladder could be found at the ground floor locked behind the front doors. Also, all of us who were facing in the front of the house and looking directly to the inside should have noticed if someone or something was moving. And similarly, the two people in the bathroom should have noticed something too, 
as the bathroom has one of those opaque glass doors. As soon as we all realized that there was no way somebody in the group could have done that, we all got inside the house, but nobody had the courage to really go up into the attic. So we just closed the door and tried to go on with the day, but everybody kept feeling quite uneasy the entire time, seeing weird shadows or hearing steps coming from the attic. I reckon that could have easily been because of the suggestion, but still. I don't know how we managed to do that, but eventually we all went to sleep, and the morning after, some friends finally decided to go up and check the attic. The room was completely bare. The only thing they found up there was a hammer, standing on its head in the middle of the room. It's fair to say, that only creeped us out all the more, and it really didn't make us want to look into whatever had happened. So again, they just got out of the attic and closed the door. We were all very glad to go back to the city later that day. This happened to me about a year ago. I often slept at my father's house alongside my sister. When we slept over, specifically if we were upstairs, we would hear someone or something running in the attic. At first it didn't scare us, and we continued to remain unfazed. We thought it must be pigeons or rats, but when we told our dad he went to check the attic to see if it was animals, but there was nothing. And even if there could have been, there was literally no space for them to run. We have a very small attic. You can't even stand upright. Alongside some wooden panels blocking a straight path, there are boxes everywhere. Clutter is covering the whole floor, and there's no gap in between. It would have been completely impossible for them to run from one side to the other with such loud footsteps. So we still don't know what's up in that attic. And frankly, I'm not sure we want to find out. Some friends and I ventured into an old abandoned hospital that's pretty securely boarded up. We climbed through a broken window that was maybe eight inches at most. It was nighttime, and most of the large hospital campus is abandoned with welded doors and boarded windows. And though people had obviously gotten in before us, there was much less graffiti and damage than we're used to seeing in these places. The campus has several buildings, and we were clueless as to which one we were in, until we found a morgue in the basement, and medical equipment strewn about. We didn't hear anything or see anything out of the ordinary, except for the light in the attic. The building had no power, yet we could see from the top floor that a light was on above us. We couldn't get into the attic, as the only staircase up there had a chained and bolted door. It was a little odd, but I'm not sure if it was paranormal. Maybe there was a solar-powered light? Would the bulb ever go out? I don't know. It didn't scare us off. We did continue wandering around for a while, but nothing crazy happened. Still, sometimes I think about that light in the attic and I try to figure out what could have caused it, but I still haven't come up with a sufficient explanation. There's this little access to the attic in the place that we currently live in. We never really noticed it, up until our roommate pointed it out, trying to mess with us and scare us. So my best girlfriend and I were doing laundry one day in the garage, this thing is located in the garage above the door. I was staring up at it as she was sorting laundry. It moved open slightly, and I told her about it. And then, it moved closed, and I told her again. She looked at it, and we laughed, kind of creeped out. You know, a nervous kind of laugh. We tried to go about our day, but then we got paranoid. So, we went inside, and we were talking about it trying to figure out what it might be. I kind of creeped her out by talking about all those videos. You know, the ones you see online of people finding out that other people were living in their attics. Well, we turned the air off and waited for it to shut down. 
We stood in the garage looking at this thing for like five solid minutes. We were going to go inside because nothing was happening. I looked at my girlfriend and said, let's go, nothing's gonna happen here. When I said that, the door flung open, fast. We ran inside screaming. The boys swear that it's from opening and closing the garage door, but we weren't doing that when this happened, so we're still weirded out. I really still want to get it checked out, because even if it isn't paranormal, that could mean that there's somebody living up there. And if there's nobody living up there, well then, something's going on. Either way, I want to know.